I want to continue this uh, talk on uh, <coughs> metta. Metta is called an eternal law. In uh, uh, Dhammapada, there is a very famous uh, stanza Nahi vere na verani sammanti da kudachanan avere na cha sammanti esa dhammo sanantano. Hatred will not be appeased by hatred. Hatred will be appeased only by love alone. This, Buddha said, is a Sanatana Dhamma. Sanatana Dhamma means eternal law. That means the practice of metta, cultivating metta, is not the Buddha's invention. It is eternal. Uh, it's always just like any other Dhamma, this particular Dhamma is uh, eternal. What we are trying to do is to uh, put it into practice, manifest it through our activities. You remember when we were having this uh, round of Dhamma talks, uh, I think uh, one of you brought out uh, the incident of Venerable uh, Anuruddha, Baddhya and uh, Bhagu. Anuruddha, Baddhya, Bhagu were three months. They were living in a forest and uh, these three lived in uh, peace and harmony. So one day uh, they visited the Buddha. Then Buddha asked them, have you been living in harmony, seeing each other's with uh, loving eyes? That means seeing each other's with the thought of loving friendliness and speaking to each other's with loving friendliness and doing things with loving friendliness like Kiro Deki Bhuta, like wa water and milk. Water and milk mix so well. Have you been living like that? They said yes, when we were Anuruddha representing everybody, he said we were living like that. Then Buddha asked them, uh, uh, how did you do that? What did you do? They said, uh, of course these things they uh, learn by themselves, by associ associating with uh, them. Uh, they said, well, when uh, we go out uh, in our different individual ways of collecting our arms food, when we come back, whoever comes back first, if there is uh, no water in the water pot, we bring water. If the seeds are not arranged, that first one who comes first arrange the seeds. When the place is not sweep, swept, uh, the the one who first comes first sweep the place. And uh, we don't uh, wait for another uh, one of the others to come and uh, do the job. And we don't say, well, this is not my job. Let him do it. And uh, why do why should I do it every day? So and so also can do it. I don't have to do every day all this by myself. Uh, and uh, he also is here on his own. We don't have servants. Uh, he also has hands and legs. <laughs> he is also healthy. <laughs> Why doesn't do his work? We don't do that. We don't say that. We don't think that. We, whether in presence or absence, we think of each other with 
and think of each other with loving thoughts. In presence and absence of each other, we always talk good of them. Not only to their face, but even in the absence, we talk they are, they are good qualities. And when there is a job to be done, suppose one of them has to mend a rope, uh, one of us would uh, uh, postpone our own personal thing and go and work, help, help him to finish his work. Suppose he has a bowl to burn, it is rusty, he wants to oil it and burn it to look it nice. So we all go and help him to do that, to collect firewood and uh, burn it and oil it and so forth. And if his kuti is to be repaired, we go and all go and help him to repair the kuti. And each one of us postpone our own personal things and help the other person. And they never uh, complain. This is our way of living. And therefore, whenever we see each other, we can see with loving thoughts, with smiling face, smiling face, loving thoughts, we can see each other. When we think about them, think about each other, we can think with loving thoughts. This is what is called real loving friendliness. When uh, we, we, we read this story, it also occurred to us, there is another uh, place the Buddha mentioned in Dhammapada, uh, Attadattam parattena bahunapi nahapaye Attadatta mabinyaya sadatta pasutosya That is, one should not neglect one's own duty on account of somebody else's work, no matter how great it is. One should not neglect one's own duty, postpone one's own duties on account of somebody else's duties, no matter how great it is. That means one must do one's own work. Now, these two seem to be a little uh, contradictory. You know, in the first place, when the Venerable Anud and Bhadya and uh, Bhagu's incident was reported to the Buddha, Buddha praised them. That's wonderful. You are my sons. Whenever Buddha wanted to praise uh, bhikkhus, he would say, You are my son. Buddha did not have so many sons, <laughs> he had only one. But whenever he wanted to praise a bhikkhu, he would say, you are my son. And he praised what this one did. In the second place, Buddha himself said, don't postpone your work on account of somebody else's work. And that is what uh, he told Venerable Ananda also. Venerable Ananda, Buddha, repeatedly asked Venerable Ananda, Ananda, don't postpone your work. Be vigilant, uh, diligent, work out of, of, for your salvation and so forth. Now, these two appears to be uh, contradictory, but actually they are not contradictory. What he meant from the second uh, statement is that not this kind of mundane things, you can postpone your mundane things, but don't postpone your spiritual training, spiritual practice. You know, helping your friends, you know, working together on mundane matters, you must help them, in, at, even at the expense of your own, own thing. But when it comes to spiritual matters, when it comes to development of your own mind, don't postpone that. In fact, in this case, in the in these three monks' case, Venerable Anuddha, Bhadya and uh, Bhagu, what they were doing is not postponing their, in a spiritual, real spiritual sense, they are not postponing their duty. They, they were not uh, 
washing their robe uh, in order to wash, help the other monks to wash his robe. By doing so, he cultivates his mind. By postponing washing his own robe, he develops his own mind to sacrifice, give up attachment to his own things. And therefore, in that case, he is not actually neglecting his duty by not washing the robe, but he actually doing his own duty in order to develop his own mind. So each and every one of them help each other, that helping each other is helping themselves to develop their own spiritual strength, spiritual uh, mind, the thought of loving kindness. So what they were doing actually, mutually supporting each other to develop their loving, friendly thought. And so, Buddha said, uh, there's another very beautiful sutta called um, Kosambi Sutta. In the sutta, he said, because you can help, you can cultivate this loving, friendly thought in six ways. The six ways are, uh, you can cultivate uh, this loving thought towards your associates, your colleagues, your friends, whomever you live with. And that is how actually we have to begin. We have to begin the practice. When we talk about the practice of uh, developing uh, living friendly thoughts, uh, it's sometimes, as some people ask in uh, the questions, uh, sometimes appears to be very abstract. Very abstract. But actually it is not abstract. It is the real, practical, living practice. Because we have to work with, with uh, fellow beings, in, whether in the family or in the society, in the community, uh, monastic community, lay community, whatever. Wherever we live, we always have other beings around us. So we have to work with them. So Buddha said, uh, say, suppose you are living in a small community. And you must learn how to cultivate this thought of loving friendliness within the community. You practice it by uh, your thoughts, whether in the presence of other fellow uh, monastics, fellow Sangha members, or in their absence. Cultivate this thought. Cultivate the thought of friendship, friend, friendliness. This is the first. Second, speak of them in presence as well as in absence with friendly thought. Don't say very sweet, beautiful, praising words in front of them and uh, step behind their back or gossip about them, say bad things about them, so and so is, so and so is such and such, I don't know how to deal with so and so, so and so appears to be such and such, I am living with so and so, but so and so does such and such and so forth, don't say in that sense. What you say in the in presence of that person, you must maintain that even in the absence of that person. If you have something wrong, bad to say, don't say it. Swallow it. Keep to yourself. If you have something to tell, tell it to the person in private. In private. Uh, my dear brother, monk, uh, my sister, nun, uh, my lay uh, follower, uh, friend, so and so, you know, at such, on such and such a day, you did such and such a thing. I don't think that is very good. 
I think we must work out something to get rid of that. That is be very good for you, good for all of us. I don't, I'm not going to gossip about it with others, but I just want to mention this to you. Uh, this is very good for our friendship, our community, our development of spiritual practice, our mindfulness, our loving friendly thoughts. This is very good. That is why I'm telling you, don't take it, don't, don't misunderstand me and so forth. You can tell the person to the face if there is a problem. Instead of going behind the person and tell everybody, you know, I notice so and so this such and such, I don't think uh, it is good. So Buddha said, talk about the about other members of the community with the loving thought in the presence as well as in absence. That is the second way of cultivating loving, friendly thought. It is not something abstract. We are dealing with living human beings. And when we deal with living human beings, we always have to find out a way to communicate in a loving, friendly way. It is a very alive thing, not an abstract practice. Third way is do things for the members of the community with loving, friendly thought in presence of that person or in absence. You may do certain things to please the person in, in his presence. When he is not there, you may not do it. You may behave in certain way just to please the person in his presence and you do behave in certain other way with regard, regardless the care without caring for the person's feelings. If the person come to know about what you have done in his back, in, in his behind his back, then the person will be disappointed. So Buddha said, do things in his presence not only to please him but even in his absence, do the same thing, to please him. And don't maintain this uh, double standard. That is the third way to practice loving, friendly thoughts. Fourth way is, whenever you receive something material, for your own use maybe, Maybe a bar of chocolate. Share it with others to show your loving, friendly feeling. Share whatever you have with others so that they will think, oh, this fellow has not forgotten us. He has such a generous heart. He is willing to share. So they also will have a similar attitude. When they receive something, they also will share. Something that you can share if you receive, uh, you know, uh, uh, one uh, uh, toothbrush. <laughs> 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 you cannot share it with others. <laughs> but if there are no other toothbrushes, Everybody should be able to share that <laughs> in a remote place. Only thing is to wash it properly and use it. <laughs> and the fifth way is whenever you have a new idea regarding the upliftment of the community, uh, promoting our peace and uh, helping somebody uh, for something, you have an idea. As soon as you get that idea, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with others, with loving, friendly thought. That idea may be regarding somebody's, uh, your, perhaps your own improvement, and uh, you, you try it out, and it works, and you think, ah, oh, this is the best idea. Let me share it with my fellow members so that they also will 
benefit from that. Says, suppose you uh, devise a special method of uh, memorizing certain things, remembering certain things, and you put it into work, and it works. You say, you know, there's a secret of memorizing things. This is how I memorize things. You try it out. You can memorize things. So you can share it with our fellow members. That is the fifth way. The sixth way is whenever you learn Dhamma, new piece of Dhamma, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with others. If you have attainments, any state of uh, spiritual attainment, share it with others of the community out of love and respect for them. This is the sixth ways of develop six ways of developing loving, friendly attitude towards fellow members in a community. So when one does all this, one uh, uh, always feels very, uh, very soft, gentle within oneself. And Buddha gave. I want to mention the benefits of uh, loving, friendly, friendliness. Friendliness. Perhaps uh, all our uh, members of our community know them by heart. Uh, but um, in a situation like this, I must repeat them uh, for the benefit of everybody else. Those members living here know them by heart, perhaps because uh, we, re we recite them, repeat them occasionally. The benefits, one number one, Buddha said, uh, Sukham Supati. You sleep well. <clears throat> of course, some people working very hard and uh, several hours a day and uh, so forth. Whenever they go to bed, they can sleep. There's no question about it. But that is not sleeping well. That is sleeping like pigs. <laughs> <laughs> You know, <laughs> grunting, snoring, and uh, <laughs> so, so. <laughs> that is not the good sleep. Good sleep is peaceful sleep. Sleep is peaceful. That is what Buddha meant. He said, uh, and also this practice is called uh, mind release or uh, releasing the mind or liberating, mind liberator. Metai bhikkhire cheto imuttiya. This is very beautiful statement. Metai bhikkhire cheto imuttiya. Cheto vimutti means liberating the mind. Li mind. Mind will be liberated from greed, hatred, tension, worry, anxiety, fear, and so forth. And therefore, it is called mind softener, mild, uh, mind. Uh, uh, gentler, that which makes the mind gentle, mind softener. Mittai bhikkhya cheto nutya asevitaya. Asevita means uh, associating, associating with this thought. Asevitaya bhavitaya, cultivating it. When you cultivate it again and again, that has an effect. Parichitaya. Parichitaya means repeating. Parichita means uh, make it a habit. Asevitaya, bhavitaya, paruchitaya, anuttitaya. Anuttitaya means uh, you get up with that. Every moment you wake up with that. Stand up with that. Parichitaya. Uh, Asevitaya, uh, Bhavitaya, Anuttitaya, Parachitaya, Asevitaya, 
భావితాయ అనుటితాయ పరిచితాయ సుసమారాధాయ సుసమారాధ మీన్స్ వెల్ స్టార్టెడ్ యు యు స్టార్ట్ యువర్ డే విత్ దిస్ అండ్ దట్ స్టార్టింగ్ ఈస్ కాల్డ్ వెల్ స్టార్టెడ్ when you cultivate the mind uh, the practice of loving kindness in this way your entire mind and body is filled with thought, with this thought of loving friendliness you are not sitting and in meditation one 10 15 minutes and recite it and forget about it not like that and you are not making it a philosophy out of that not make some kind of theory out of it you are putting it into practice every single day in your action and that is how when you go to sleep you sleep peacefully so come supati now if not you cannot sleep well uh you cannot sleep otherwise you cannot sleep well when the mind is filled with uh, uh, this is loving friendly thought loving friendliness if the other kind of uh, love this is what is called metta this has this effect when you cultivate metta you can sleep well so you, i want to find out, show you the difference between uh, somebody asked me yesterday Uh, why don't we say love instead of loving friendliness i try to draw some distinction between this and this loving friendliness has calming soothing comforting effect other kind of love has agitating exciting effect and when that is uh, aroused you cannot sleep <laughs> you cannot sleep you will be keep keeping tossing in the bed thinking of all kind of things when you have other kind of love i remember there was somebody came here a girl she told us a story she said that she had a boyfriend one winter in the dead of winter night she became so passionate and uh, just got up and in a night gown without shoes without anything she walked on snow for one mile to meet this boy on the snow in the dead of night in the dead of winter she could not sleep so see the difference between this love and that love <laughs> <laughs> this love puts you to sleep <laughs> <laughs> that love keep you up agitated excited <laughs> so she walked and walk <laughs> when she arrived there no one is no he got up he got so angry <laughs> he beat her beat her up and took a broom and broke her leg he was so cruel and still this girl girl loved him <clears throat> so if you if you have cultivate this kind of loving, loving friendship loving friendliness nobody will be to up <laughs> everybody will accept you <laughs> you can see the difference between these two <laughs> so buddha said if you cultivate this loving friendliness you become calm peaceful quiet relaxed <laughs> you can sleep 
स्लीप गए then as a result of sleeping well <laughs> you get up well get up well with you feel fresh when you get up in the morning your sleep was not uh, very very uh, troublesome sleep <coughs> because it was very peaceful sleep body is calm mind is calm nerves are calm senses are calm. <clears throat> when you get up you feel calm you feel peaceful you feel really happy next morning you don't feel grouchy grumpy next morning because your sleep was very very comfortable very good and in between sleep and getting up na papa kan supinam pasati you don't see you don't have a nightmare <clears throat> whatever sleep you whatever dream you have will be a good meaningful dream premonistic dream dream telling you something meaningful <clears throat> actually when you have meaningful dreams that can even help you to plan your life because you keep a record of meaningful dreams not all dreams are always meaningful some dreams are really really meaningful <clears throat> so you can uh, uh, make your entire day's work day's activities according to your dream plan then <clears throat> you become manusyanam pyo hoti you become pleasant to human beings because you are your senses are calm mind is calm your body is calm your activities are calm you are peaceful naturally people like you <clears throat> then amanusanam pyo hoti you become pleasant even to non human beings like um, demons devas spirits goblins animals we believe there are all sort of beings in the world you remember the background of karaniya metta sutta karaniya metta sutta the sutta we recited the <coughs> in one of our loving loving kindness recitals we recite it at lunch time and so forth every day <coughs> the background of such sutta is also very important why the buddha that is uh, when you read that sutra very mindfully carefully there is not one single word without any meaning without uh, to be to throw away every word in that sutra has a very beautiful meaning very well neatly <coughs> organized sutra <coughs> it is like it works like a magic because it is so beautifully arranged meaningfully read you know this i have already called taught there were a, a 60 a group of 60 monks who went to a forest to meditate when they went to the forest <coughs> the the forest uh, tree uh, deities were very pleased to receive them and they um, came down from their uh, abodes to help these monks 
But these deities never thought they were going to stay there very long. They thought, well, tomorrow after lunchtime they will leave. Because the, this is rather inconvenient for the deities to be on, always on guard, you know, guard on their senses and be always alert and mindful in this uh, meditative mantra around. That was rather not uh, their usual way, that is uh, sort of a special uh, uh, way. <coughs> Only temporarily they can do it, not for a long time. And therefore it was rather inconvenient to them. Therefore they thought, tomorrow these monks will leave. When tomorrow came, they did not leave. Went, collected their food, came back to the monastery, forest. Then they thought that maybe tomorrow they will leave. Third day, tomorrow they will leave. Fourth, they waited for about a whole week. These monks were not leaving. So their love and respect slowly dwindled down and became weak and that all turned into contempt and dislike, disappointment and resentment and they began to resent these monks. <coughs> but they cannot do anything about them. So they devised a method. They said, well, let us bring some heads without bodies and bodies without heads, human heads and human bodies separately and spread here and there in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> so when these months uh, you know, walk around at night, they stumble over a dead body <laughs> without head. Or sometimes they stumble over a head without body. Oh, simply stinky, a lot of flies and worms and so ugly, smelly, you know, bloated and ugly. So these ones got all one after the other. All of them began to fall sick. <coughs> And they were throwing up and they had high fever and they could not sleep, they could not meditate, they were so frightened. They thought, boy, this is not the place for us to live. <laughs> so they, they decided to leave the forest. So the deities were very happy. <clears throat> so they were supposed to stay there for three months. They stayed there only one week. When they returned, Buddha asked them, uh, why did you return so quickly? You are supposed to be there for six, three, three, three months. They said, sir, that is not the place for us. Why not? Then they told him the story. We have such and such a problem. Therefore, we cannot stay there. Buddha said, no, 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 you must go back. That is the place for you to go. <laughs> they said, sir, please, <laughs> we, we protest. We cannot go. No, don't say that. Go back. That is the good place for you to meditate. This man say, how can we meditate? Under this circumstance, how can we meditate? I mean, please, sir, don't force us to go. We protest. No, because, listen, you must go there. Listen, first time you went there without a weapon, that is why all these problems came to you. This time you go with a weapon. They began to wonder what kind of weapon, a club, <laughs> or knife, or gun, what? <laughs> Buddha said, no, no, those are not the powerful enough. To drive away those evil spirits, clubs is not powerful, gun is not powerful, even a bomb is not powerful, they, they are more powerful than that. This time you take metta, <laughs> this time you take loving friendliness with you. You learn it, <coughs> practice it, feel yourself and fill yourself with these thoughts in your mind without any fear, any hesitation you give, go there. That is why I say this sutra is so powerful, so beautifully arranged. When you read it again and again, when you read, read very carefully mindfully to see the meaning of the sutra. 
it is so powerful second time they went there and buddha said before you enter the forest you sit at the periphery of the forest in the boundary and there you all recite the sutra and you all meditate on loving friendliness don't think of don't let any scruple of anti what you call uh, um, hostile uh, angry thought enter your mind don't let an iota of angry thought enter your mind you must charge your mind with loving friendliness build it up with yourself meditate and then slowly walk into the forest <clears throat> that's what they did these deities were amazed the way they themselves began to feel very comfortable very peaceful with these monks <clears throat> this time they welcomed them not only welcomed them they 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 cleaned their places arranged their seats and every single day until these monks left the place they helped these monks to stay there i think that's a very beautiful way beautiful story of uh, practicing loving friendliness <clears throat> we all must remember that therefore buddha said amanusarnang pyo hoti those who practice do uh, those who practice loving friendliness are loved by non human beings <clears throat> not only that devata rakanti you know i have another little story to tell you about uh, non human beings <clears throat> this also is a very true story the other story i learned from <clears throat> from buddhist texts this story is my own personal experience <clears throat> when i was in malaysia <clears throat> i keep these stories in my mind because they really convey the real message of the buddha the truth <clears throat> not only the buddha the message of uh, the fundamental message of all religions behind our temple in kuala lumpur there was a, a man who had uh, this uh, german shepherd <clears throat> dog <clears throat> very big dog and he was very fierce he would not let somebody walk on the road the dog was always on 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 leash on the leash and still <clears throat> he would try to break the leash and try to come out of the the fence and bite people that kind of very vicious dog <clears throat> so one day uh the owner had given him some chicken and uh, one chicken bone stuck in his throat and nobody could get close to the dog to remove it and for several days this dog did not could not eat and still he was still you know growling at people when somebody gets close to him even to remove this uh, chicken bone so this man thought the best thing is to put him to death <coughs> put him to sleep so he was taking him to vet and he was taking him uh, to the <coughs> uh, animal doctor and going going by another house that in that house there was a little boy 4 years old boy this boy is known in the family and in, in the neighborhood to be a uh, most compassionate child <coughs> seeing this man taking the dog this child uh, uh so the dog in the past he has seen this dog many times but that day dog was very thin and uh, this boy came out and asked uh, the man why you want to take the dog where you take he said i'm going to put him to sleep why then he told him the reason then this boy said please let me have the dog he said how can you have the dog you cannot get close to him he's a very very mean dog this boy said no no never mind let him have the dog <clears throat> and then he got his parents come out of the house 
and parents also begged this man to give the dog to this boy. And when the parents approached this man, the owner of the dog, he said, okay, but be careful, don't get close to him, you cannot remove this, uh, the, the bone from his throat. <coughs> the boy said, never mind, let him, let the dog be here. So everybody agreed, so they left the dog there and they tied him to a post. And uh, this boy went up to the dog and straight away he put his hand into the mouth of the dog and pulled the chicken bone out of his mouth. And this dog didn't do anything to this little child. And since then, this dog became most friendly, most gentle, very beautiful dog. And the boy kept the dog until, boy, and the, until the dog died. <coughs> now, this child's compassion, the dog felt, everybody else approached the dog with the very uh, the owner approached the dog with his authority and others approached him with uh, fear. This boy did not have any fear of this dog. All he had was his love and compassion for the dog. He is known for his compassion in the whole neighborhood. For his uh, uh, siblings, his uh, parents, his grandparents, for neighbors for everybody. And this moment he really proved his compassion. And dog recognized him. <coughs> this, I know the story quite well because this happened right near our monastery in Kuala Lumpur. Therefore, when uh, we practice this, uh, we must have confidence confidence in ourselves that this is going to work. Amanusyanam Kriyanamoti Devata Rakkanti Buddha said Devata Rakkanti Those who practice loving friendly thought all the time do not emanate do not generate negative hormones in their body. And therefore even deities protect them <coughs> guard them Then, nasa agiva visangva satangva khamati. Those who practice loving friendly thought will not be affected by poison, fire, and weapons. That's, uh, see, that sounds a little far fetched, <coughs> but it has meaning in it. Those who practice this uh, thought uh, are generally calm, peaceful. Even when poison enters their body, it will not uh, uh, affect them as strongly as uh, those who do not practice this. It will work very slowly. There will be plenty of time to treat the person. Uh, <coughs> uh, weapons, uh, we know uh, stories about people who uh, go to shoot somebody. I was told by somebody in Sri Lanka who was practicing loving friendliness. <coughs> he told us a story that uh, during uh, there was a period in Sri Lanka where uh, everybody was killing each other, everybody else. And uh, many, 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 many people were killed like that. During that time, a young man came to this man uh, and uh, one night and uh, 
he took a revolver and uh, aimed at him and said, uh, Sir, I have an order to kill you. So this man, he said he is practicing loving friendliness, loving kindness. Even at that moment, he said, Of course you have every right to shoot me because you are my student. I remember you when you were a little boy. I was, I've been teaching you. Now you have grown up. So you have good enough reasons to kill me. Then this boy said, But sir, how can I shoot you? I cannot shoot you because you are my teacher. So this man again said, That, that is the reason for you to shoot me. Then he said, if I don't shoot you now, my other colleagues who are behind me uh, will shoot me. Then he said, you shoot me. So the boy said, uh, please run. I shoot in the, uh, in the air so that they will think that uh, I shot you. He said, young man, I don't have to do that. You do whatever you want, <clears throat> because I have no animosity toward you. You are still my boy. You are still my student. I have no reason to get upset with you. Do whatever you want. And this boy actually shot in the air and joined the other gangs and went away and did not shoot this man. <clears throat> he said, it is purely because of his practice of loving friendliness, this boy didn't have enough guts to lift his, to pull the trigger. This sort of things is possible when we practice loving friendliness. People generally, uh, if they come to face to face, uh, for no reason to shoot, they will not shoot. Because they recognize, they feel, <clears throat> how can I shoot this person who is so innocent, so friendly, so gentle, so kind, full of living, friendly thoughts? How can I shoot? They won't shoot. And Buddha said, this is true. Tuatanchitans mukhamanno vipasidati. Buddha said, those who practice loving friendliness, their face becomes beautiful, pleasant. <clears throat> so if you want to be beautiful, that's what you have to do. Don't use too much cosmetic. <laughs> Practice loving friendliness. It will come, you know, from within and express through your face. Friendliness will express through your face. And the other things are all out superficial beauty, but the true beauty comes from the practice of loving friendliness. It comes always out of you. In the morning, in the, in the evening, at night, anytime when you, somebody looks at you, if you are practicing loving friendliness, you will be beautiful. You see, Mukhavanna Vipasiddhati. When we try to practice meditation, because we have already done our groundwork to gain concentration. Buddha said, when you practice loving friendliness, you gain concentration. To gain concentration, we have to have a calm and peaceful state of mind. So, <clears throat> uh, Tuatanchitta samadhyati asamulo kalankaroti. When we die, we die peacefully, without any confusion. You know, only when we die peacefully uh, that we will be able to recollect our previous lives. If we die with a confused state of mind, we may not be able to recall remember our previous lives. So if you want to uh, remember this life, next life, 
<laughs> See? Practice this loving friendliness and try to die peacefully. So you will uh, uh, have a peace, that is what we call real peaceful death. Peaceful death. Actually many people not die not peacefully. Many people die with lot of confusions, lot of um, mental agitation, disappointment, upset. <coughs> so if we keep practicing this all the time, again we can die peacefully. And uh, if you gain concentration, you can gain um, jhanic experience, you can gain uh, through insight and uh, so forth in this very life and even attain the stages of enlightenment. But Buddha said the uh, uttaring apati vijjanto, if you don't gain higher stages of uh, meditative attainments, uttaring apati vijjanto, brahma lokupa gohoti, you will be reborn in brahma realms. There are many, 16 realms called brahma realms. Why 16? For you to choose whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> if you practice living friendliness, you choose one of them. And you can be born there as a, as a Brahma. One thing, when you become, when you are born as a Brahma, there is no gender discrimination. So even there you have an the advantage. Don't have to worry about gender. You all are in one gender. I don't know what it is. <laughs> uh, you will be born there. <laughs> so, so uh, I think this is enough for the Amato. And uh, if you have questions, <coughs> Perhaps we can answer them in the evening. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.